happy day, I'm coming home, and boy, oh boy, do I ever have a story for you. I spent Christmas Eve alone, okay, because I went out for my birthday and I just wanted to be very, very careful. I was very emotional on Christmas Eve because, again, I didn't get to see anybody. I was feeling devastated. I think that I got emotional a few times. I'm laying in bed watching a Valorant stream and I scratch my chest and I feel something there. Wait a minute. Something that isn't supposed to be there, something that was never there before. I was wondering why the right side of my chest was itchy for a while, and now I'm wondering why it's itchy and there's a lump there. So I get really scared. I start crying, I go on Google, and never, you should just never, don't ever go on Google and search, hey Google, I have a lump in my breast, can you please tell me what the problem is? Also, it's itchy. Don't do that! <laughs> because I did that and it scared me so, so badly that I grab the phone and I start calling around. I start searching to see if any sort of mammogram place is open, if any doctors are open today, tomorrow, the next day. Everybody that I was looking up, especially the mammogram places, were all closed until January 5th. I couldn't wait that long because I'm kind of a hypochondriac. So I called the hospital and I said, hey, I'm Cassie and I have a lump found one <laughs> and they were like, okay, well, um, do you have a history of cancer in your family? And I said, yes, actually my mom's sister, whose name was also Kasima and looks exactly like me, according to her kids. She died of cancer when she wasn't too much older than me. So um, th there's that history. And they were like, okay, well you should come into the emergency room. And I said, are you sure that this is an emergency? I don't want to like, you know, waste taxpayers' resources or like, you know, come in and be, be the girl who's coming in like, hey, I have a problem. And they were like, no, you should come in. And I was like, okay, <laughs> start crying again. I'm like, Terry, I have to go to the emergency room. It's Christmas Eve. And he's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna take you to the emergency room. Don't worry. I'm gonna hold your hand the entire time. We hop in the Batmobile. We drive to the ER right at the front door. They're like, your man friend can't come with you. You have to go in by yourself. I was like, no. The ER was very quiet. Okay, quiet was the wrong word. It was not quiet, but there were only 13 of us. And 13 people was enough to cause absolute pandemonium. There was a Karen there, we'll call her blonde Karen. She was holding an ice pack on her head and just being so, so dramatic, going, when is it gonna be my turn? Looking at the security guards and going, you. Like, okay, she was crazy. There was another Karen, brown-haired Karen, and she was just stomping, stomping all over the place. How long is this wait gonna be? Calls her husband. I can't believe this is taking so long. I have an emergency. Me and all of these Karens looked completely fine. I'm not really sure what the issue is. Maybe there actually was a problem, but they were being so difficult. Karen number three comes rolling through. She stomps up to the triage. How long is this going to take? It is appalling, appalling how long this wait has been. And one of the nurses said, if you don't like the wait time, you're gonna have to go to another hospital. She closed the door and then she, the nurse, had a mental breakdown to the other nurses. And I was like, what is going on in here? Like what? Ah, like the triage nurses don't pick when you go in. Why is everybody yelling at the triage nurses? It was a disaster. My faith in humanity was at an all time low until a man walked in. A man who looked so gangster, <clears throat> crazy gangster, this guy, the drip was out of control. He walks in, he's like, hey, I need to go see a doctor. And the triage nurse is like, okay, what are you here for? Like, what, what's the issue? I, uh, I got stabbed. And the nurse is like, oh my goodness, when did this happen? Yesterday. And the nurse is like, oh my God. And I was like, oh my God, yesterday? The nurse was like, why didn't you come in yesterday? And he was like, cause I was trying to spend Christmas Eve with my family, but like I tried to sleep, bro, and like it hurts so bad. So now I'm here. <laughs> and the nurse is like, okay, can you show me your wound? And he's like, yeah, for sure. He pulls up like his giant baggy sleeve and there is like 10 centimeters packed 
thick of gauze and then it's wrapped in tin foil. Like this man's about to bake his arm at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, a nice Christmas ham. This guy really had a knife go through his arm and then wrapped it up with gauze and tin foil and tried to go to bed that night so he could make it to Christmas Eve. Like it was insane. The nurse was like, could you show me the wound? Can you unwrap it? And he was like, no bro, no bro, no, 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 no. I, no, can I, I need, I need a doctor to do it. Can I, can I please have some numbing? I, I can't unwrap it by myself. And then he turns around to all of us in the waiting room. The Karens have quieted down by then. We're all just like fascinated by this man. I'm a puss for pain. Sorry about my language. And I just thought it was really interesting how this man who took a knife in the arm had more class, sophistication, empathy, and elegance than every single Karen in that room combined. And when the triage nurse told this man to sit down and wait, he sat down and waited quietly. So my turn finally comes after about an hour and a half, which isn't that bad of a wait. So everybody who was also in there, like probably didn't wait that long. I go into the doctor. They ask me to change into a gown. I'm like, yeah, for sure. And in there, there's a Karen who won't leave. We will call her red haired Karen. I need another x-ray on my toe. And the doctor's like, we already did an x-ray. And she's like, well, I don't get why you won't put a cast on my toe. And he was like, with this kind of toe breakage, we don't usually cast, like it doesn't need a cast to heal. She's going back and forth with the doctor, even though her appointment has been complete. I'm sitting there in my gown behind the curtain and the doctor finally comes in the curtain with me. Even though he's in the curtain with me, the Karen's like, when am I supposed to come back for my next appointment? And the doctor's like, ma'am, I am with another patient now. The doctor tells me to take down my gown and he feels the area. And he's like, okay, there's definitely a lump in there. And I'm like, okay, um, do you like have any idea what kind of lump it, it, it could be? And the doctor was like, well, you're going to have to come back on the 29th to get an ultrasound. And I was like, ultrasound? I thought it was gonna be a mammogram, but I don't wanna be a Karen, so I'm not gonna ask too many questions. So he was like, uh, I'm gonna go out and like write you your appointment and then I'll be right back. And I was like, okay. So he goes out, he comes back in and I'm like, please, for my peace of mind, like I know that you don't know what it is. I know it's not proper for you to tell me what it is if you haven't seen it like via a scan, but like, can you tell me like any information just to give me peace of mind before my appointment in four days. And he was like, yes, it's not too deep in there and it doesn't appear to be stuck and it's not massive. And it doesn't have like appendages or something. Like it's, it's pretty smooth. I think that you're safe to be optimistic. Obviously you're still gonna need the scans just to make sure, but don't lose sleep over it. And I was like, okay. <sighs> That's good. So I go home, I tell Terry what happened. I didn't end up telling my family or any of my friends what happened until the next day because I didn't want to ruin their Christmas, but I think I did because I told them on Christmas. It's not always a good phone call to be like, hey, I have a lump, but I was able to say, it's probably nothing serious. And like, if it is something, then it appears that you would have caught it early. I waited four days and then my appointment comes. It's worth mentioning that the night before my appointment, I was like, I need to wake up early tomorrow because the doctor told me to call ahead before my appointment. For some reason though, I decided to eat the spiciest Mexican food I could get my hands on. There was that green sauce everywhere. I put extra hot sauce on top. I love spicy food. And I woke up with a terrible stomach ache. I woke up at 6 a.m. to call. They didn't answer. I called at seven, eight, 9.30 and on the way to the hospital, nobody answered. And I was like, ah, like what if, what if they don't let me in because I didn't call ahead? They aren't answering. Like, do I leave a message? What do I do? I, my stomach really hurts. I feel like I'm gonna need a bathroom. Oh, well, I'll use a bathroom at the hospital. So I go to the hospital and I say, hey, I have an appointment for an ultrasound. They're like, did you call ahead? I'm like, I tried but nobody answered. Okay, it's gonna be a pretty long wait, but uh, yeah, you can go in and get changed. Unlike the ER where there's only 13 people in there, if you don't count the people in stretchers, there were probably 50 women waiting there. And I could tell that they were all patients because they were all wearing the same blue gown with your butt sticking out as I was about to wear. I put it on, I'm looking for a bathroom and the only one there was in between two waiting rooms just absolutely loaded with women. And I was like, I'm not about to ruin everybody's holidays by going in this bathroom. They could all hear what's going on. I can't do it. I'm gonna have to wait. Like, hopefully it's like the hospital and I'm only waiting for an hour and a half. So I'm just sitting there like, 
rocking back and forth like a crazy person. I need to go to the bathroom so bad. And the wait ended up being three hours. Thankfully, there were no Karens in the room, 50 women in there about to get scanned and all of them were so polite, so quiet, so patient. It, the three hours was amazing compared to the hour and a half in the ER. I finally get called in. The nurse is like, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, hey, it's, it's going good. Pretty busy day, hey? Just trying to strike up some conversation. She's like, actually, we are very understaffed right now because people are out sick. And I was like, oh, maybe that's why they didn't answer the phone. Maybe that's why it's like so backed up. So I go in, I lay down on the table. She puts the jelly on me and she does the ultrasound. I'm like, okay, this is it. What's it gonna be? So she goes, talks to the doctor. She comes back and she's like, the radiologist um, has also requested that you do a mammogram. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you saying that he looked at my results? He went, what is going on here? My mind started just absolutely going crazy. And I was like, okay, we'll do the mammogram. I've never done a mammogram before. This should be fun. And she was like, okay, are you wearing deodorant? And I was like, yes, I am. And she was like, here's a cloth. You're gonna have to wash deodorant off. And I'm like, okay, so I'm washing my deodorant off. She takes my chest, she puts it on a thing, and then she slams down a sheet of glass on it. And I'm like, ah! And she's like, make sure that you're relaxed. And I'm like, I can't. Why is it that 50% of the population are women and nobody has ever told me that mammograms hurt really bad? Or maybe I'm just a chicken. I don't know. I thought that it really hurt. We did the mammogram and then she was like, okay, the doctor will be right back in with you to tell you what your results are. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Glad I'm here. I'm glad I went to the ER, even though it was crazy. I'm glad to be here because whatever it is, I can deal with it. Uh, it's gonna be okay. Uh, 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 uh. She comes back in and not the doctor and she's like, okay, um, it's a cyst, you're all done here, thank you. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Am I gonna get to see a doctor? Because I, first of all, I'm glad that it's a cyst. That's amazing, awesome, love that. But the doctor in the ER had mentioned that if it's a cyst, if it's fibrous, then I might need to get a biopsy. Like I, I have a lot of questions and she was like, I'm sorry, we are short staffed. We don't have a lot of time. You gotta get out of here. And I'm like, okay, do, can I change? And she's like, no, you, you have to change out there. And I'm like, okay, well, she, she has other patients, so that makes sense. So I'm changing and I'm worried that I, I have this cyst in here. Like I would have loved to know like what kind of cyst it was. It, again, if it's a fibrous cyst, then like it could eventually cause a problem. Like I needed more information and I didn't get to ask my questions. And I'm not usually this dramatic or reactive, but based on my family history, I, 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 I just wanted some, questions to be answered. So I'm gonna have to go see a family doctor and he's gonna assess my results and then push comes to shove, then I'm gonna get a biopsy. Like it's a lot <laughs> of stuff that I've been really, really deeply worried about. And that's why I haven't really uploaded much in the past week. On top of that, I'm also just like extremely burnt out. I tried to work like harder than I've ever worked in 2021 and it was great and I loved it. And I would say that I had my best year ever, but I'm also, really tired. I'm really uninspired. I usually have YouTubers who I can lean on and be like, okay, I, I like watching these guys because they inspire me and they make me like proud of what I I'm doing. I don't really have anybody lately that I can watch for that reason. I don't really have anybody who's inspiring me. Like I, I feel like myself and a lot of other people have just kind of been doing the same thing over and over and over. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but the whole scare that I had, it just kind Kind of was the nail in the coffin for me it made me realize that i need to take a break i need to i need to work on my personal life my house is always a disaster i don't remember the last time i cooked a meal when i had this scare i was like well i mean it's probably because you don't take care of yourself just that epiphany was so strong that it's made I need to take a break, okay? I don't know how long it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be a month or so. I'm not sure. I just, I need to get happy with how I treat myself and my relationship towards YouTube. I've been really, really scared of taking a break. And the reason why I've never taken a sizable break on this channel is because I'm really happy to be part of people's days. Like that makes me happy enough to do something even if I don't wanna get out of bed that day. And also it's just, it's just scary. Like everybody is always grinding and then when you stop grinding you can see in your numbers how it hurts you i need to not be afraid of that anymore and i need to take a break i really hope that some of you guys are here when i'm back if not then i hope that i can i hope that i'm in a better creative space that i can earn you guys back um that'd be really nice and cool 
fun and fresh. This is just a really long-winded story to say that I'm signing off, I'm taking a break. I hope that you guys understand. I hope that you guys have people you can watch who will take care of you while I'm gone. I really, really appreciate your loyalty to me and watching me and everything that's good that has happened in Terry and me's lives is because of you guys. So thank you so much for that. I only went until I physically can't anymore. Like I'm insane right now. And um, this break is extremely warranted. So I will see you guys when I'm back. And um, that's all from me. I'll see you guys on the next one. Or I guess next time. Bye.